Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 11, double one of Spearhead Sundays. Hope you're having a shit one, everybody tuning in. Uh, let me get this shit sorted. How is everybody? Did you have a good, did you have a good week? You did? Hey? Hey, you get up to some activities? Did you, did you do, what, did you practice some things that you wanted to, did you learn anything? Hey? Did you, did you, have you been playing that guitar that you want to play? You've been reading that book you want to read? You've been studying? Or have you just been slacking off and, like, lose a whole day to masturbating? Like, sometimes you just do that. <laughs> just spend six hours having a wank because you can't be bothered doing anything else. It's not procrastinating if it feels good. Um, I, yeah, I hope you guys are having a shit one. Um, as per, as last week, I, I uh, floated the idea, should we have guests on the podcast once a month? Once a month, I was thinking like the first podcast of every month, I would have a guest, uh, talk to them about shit, not really an interview, just more of a conversation, I ask them some stuff that you guys want to know, and then uh, we could do a miscellaneous bit at the end and uh, maybe kill themselves. You guys thought that was a good idea, um, maybe not the suicide part, but you thought it was a pretty good idea, so uh, you know what, I'm going to do it. I'm going to have guests on the podcast, the first podcast of every month. I'm not too sure when I'm going to start it. Uh, because my tour is coming up. My tour is in two weeks, so I don't really want to try anything new. I don't want to try anything that could possibly fail that isn't the show. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to learn anything. I don't want to think about anything. Uh, everyone's nagging me to get my driver's license, but I don't, I don't, want, to, I don't, I don't want to fucking learn it because I don't drive. I'm an invalid. I'm that, I'm that fuck that you have to pick up. Hey, man, are you going to the party? Yeah, can I get a ride? I'm that guy. I'm that guy that you have to pick up because there's no way you would ever see him if you didn't do that. I'm 22, guys. That's how pathetic is that? I just don't drive. But there's public transport everywhere near me. I can get wherever I want to get within like 50 minutes, wherever I'm going. I always get there unless it's like someone's house. You know, that's that's when I need help. <laughs> can you help me? You can't pick me up. Oh, I hate... I'm, I'm sick of it. I, I don't I don't mind not being able to drive. I just don't like having to ask everybody that to pick me up. That that's what annoys me. Like if it didn't if it didn't impact other people, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind at all. I'd be totally cool getting public transport everywhere. That's why there's so many fucking photos of me that you guys take just a photo of me just doing nothing. You should look on my Instagram or type in the hashtag. Is that what it's called? The fucking hashtag on Instagram. Type in spot nebs and you'll just see hundreds of photos of me just on public transport in the city doing fucking nothing. And they're always ugly photos. Every single one. I mean, if you guys are going to secretly take a photo and then not say hello, the least you could do is take a couple and then, you know, send me the best one. <laughs> One I had, one I had, I was, I was, I don't know what I was doing. I look, I think I was reading a book, but you couldn't, you couldn't tell that I was reading a book. So it looked like I was trying to suck my own dick. As my mouth was open, I was bent over myself, looking down. It looked like I was trying to suck myself off on the train. <laughs> so yeah, just, uh, just try a little harder next time, guys. You know, make me look at, at least try. You know, I'm not the best looking guy on the planet, but at least you can put some effort in. I put effort in. You know, so if you're, if you're going to take a photo of me. At least put some effort in. How fucking weird is that anyway? Huh? You guys just take photos of me. I'll be out one day walking down the street and then I'll, I'll sit down, uh, you know, 10 minutes down the road. I'll look at my phone on Snapchat. All of a sudden, I've got like a photo of me. And I'm like, hang on. This person didn't say hello. They took a photo of me. They, they, they saw me. They decided instead of saying hello, I'm going to get out my phone secretly take a photo. So they put thought into not being caught. Take a photo of me and then send it to me. And that's the end of the interaction. That They don't say hello. They don't do anything like that. <laughs> and then they send it to me. And then it's my fault. I post them. That's the reason why you guys just want to get posted. Fucking hell. Oh, just my Instagram is just covered with photos that other people have taken of me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> But um, yeah, my show's coming up. It's two weeks away now. Uh, the, the first show in Melbourne, the whole tour is two weeks away. The first show in Melbourne is April 5, and then I do a show every single night except Monday night until April 17. Then I have a little break, and I go on tour, and I do every other state. I should probably fucking know my dates. I don't know my dates. Let me have a look. I gotta look it up. Um, 
See, there's, if there's one thing that I should know, it should be when I'm performing. Yeah, so April 5 to 17 in Melbourne, and then all of the other states, I'm only doing one show. If they sell out, that's it. I'm doing Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, and Sydney. Adelaide is on May 13, then Perth on May 14, then Brisbane on May 20, then Sydney on May 21. Every one of these shows is all ages except for Perth. Perth is strictly 18 plus. Brisbane, minors can attend, but they must be accompanied by a parent or legal guardian. Uh, so if you can get a homeless person who looks like your dad, you'll be sweet. If your dad actually is a homeless person, that's even better. <laughs> just show up with your methed up dad. Yeah, I'm having a fucking comedy with me, son. Just, uh, just do that. But yeah, the show's almost ready. I'm at the stage where it's it's every joke is typed out how it's supposed to be said. And then I'm reading it every single day. I'm saying it, reciting it every single morning. And then sometimes before I go to sleep as well. So it stays in my head. Because that's what I wanted to do from last year. Last year was really, really good. And I, the show was awesome. But this year, I want it to be word perfect. Like you're watching a fucking comedy special. So um, that's what I'm trying to... That's my goal with this one. My goal with this show was to do longer bits. And then do them word perfect exactly. How they're supposed to be like a play, but uh, shitter. <laughs> um, so yeah, to uh, to help promo the show, I've got I've got a big I got a big video coming, guys. It should be out on Thursday. So what I've got is I've got on Tuesday. Don't don't fucking quote me if this doesn't happen. Just please be quiet. I'm freaking out about the show already. If it doesn't happen, it's not because I hate you guys. It's just because I'm fucking freaking out about this show. Okay. So I've got a big video. I've got a big Lou review coming on Tuesday. And then I've got this fucking hilarious video that I filmed with Luke Kidgel, who's opening for me in Melbourne and uh, Brisbane and Sydney, actually. He's coming all those states. How could he be bothered? Um, a brilliant video with, uh, with Luke Kidgel uh, that I'll be dropping on Thursday. And I think it's probably... I haven't seen the final edit. But I was there when we... I was in it, obviously, and I wrote it. And I'm very, very happy with the script. I'm very, very happy with the filming. Elliot Loney's in it as well. Um, it's a big... We, we, we shot for like seven hours. We went down to St. Kilda Beach. And then we went to like some bush in the river. Uh, we had to go over the Westgate three or four times because the guy driving was a fucking idiot. Not that I can talk. I don't even drive. We, we go on the Westgate once... We were coming home from St. Kilda, and we had to go to, like, North Melbourne. We went over the Westgate once. We we're halfway across the Westgate. I'm like, why are we on the Westgate? And then dickhead driver is like, oh, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, uh, we're on the Westgate. I don't know what we're doing. So we get off the Westgate, and then, of course, we've got to go back on it, because we're not supposed to be there anyway. Get back on the Westgate. So we go back the opposite direction. And then uh, we're just talking to Luke in the back seat of the car. And then uh, next thing you know, we're back on the fucking Westgate for the third time. I'm like, what are you doing, you idiot? He's like, I don't know. The road I drove on just fucking took me here. So then we had to go back on it again. We were on the Westgate like four fucking times. I couldn't deal with it. I wanted to jump off by the, by the third time. On the way back, on the fourth time, they had to fucking hold me in. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've got a big video. I'm really happy with how it came out. It's, it's probably... it's. It's, uh, I don't know, it's, you guys, I don't want to ruin it for you, because it's, it's like, uh, it's, uh, you'll see, you'll see, that's what I'll say, you guys will see. Um, during production, I, uh, I took a blanket from my house, so there, my house is just full of nice rugs and nice blanket things, because mum's a hippie, and so she recently washed them all. I just realized how horrible this is, well, I'm just going to tell you, it's such a mean thing, just not a mean thing, just a really bad thing that I did. Mum washed all of the rugs that she likes. She's really into rugs and shit. Hangs them all up on the line. Uh, and then what I did is I needed a rug uh, for the video as a prop. So I went on to over to the line and I took it off the line and then I put it in the car and then we went and we filmed. And then there was there's a scene where we throw the rug in the river and we had to put uh, stones and dirt in it so that it sunk. So we throw this rug into the river. It sinks to the bottom of the river. And then uh, we, I left it there. That was it. I, fucking, I, I took the rug off the line and then threw it in the fucking river and then left it there. What a mean thing to do to my mum. <laughs> She's got... Mind you, she hasn't noticed. So I'm just not going to say anything. Is that a bad thing? I'm not gonna say a, I'm not gonna say a word. Right? I'm not gonna tell her she hasn't noticed. I don't know how she hasn't noticed. We've got so many probably because we've got like fucking thirty rugs. 
Any of your mums into that weird shit? I think I think every mum is into a really weird fucking thing. And it doesn't matter what it is, they just have 30 of them. If it's candles, or it's yoga books, or or your like psychology books. How to to live calmly. Like all those fucking bullshit books. They're like, oh, just sit alone and pour yourself a tea and give yourself time to reflect on the universe and yourself and calm your mind. Really, what the book should say is how to relax and clear your mind. And it should be this really big book and it's just one page and big text right in the middle. It just says, have a wank. (laughs) That'll clear anyone's head, I reckon. Like, no, it should be like, have three wanks. You won't be able to think of anything after that. Third time, you're done. (laughs) Uh, But during filming, uh, I ripped my jacket, my... My favorite jacket. It's the one that I wear all the time. It's the one that I had to stop wearing in photos and videos because you cunts assumed it was the only item of clothing I owned. Look, Lewis has done three Lou reviews in his purple leather jacket. Is this the only thing he owns? Is Lewis homeless? What's going on? But yeah, I ripped it. You guys will probably be happy to hear. But it's my favorite jacket. It's, it's not like a not like a little tear either. It's like a big flap off the arm. It's fucked. Favorite jacket, absolutely fucking ruined. I don't know what to do. Do I take it to a tailor? Because I'm not throwing it out. I want to get it fixed. But you can't really... Leather is skin. You can't just, like, stitch leather. You'll be able to tell. How do you fix a massive tear in leather? Can somebody seriously inbox me? There's, I bet there's, like, one girl who knows exactly how to fix this. She's listening. Out of the 15 people listening, there's one girl, and she's just a clothing repairs expert and she's listening and she knows exactly what's going on can you please help me whoever you are girl or guy if you know how to fix my jacket please inbox my page i've got no fucking idea it's this massive fucking flap totally or i can't wear it anymore because it'll get worse i don't know what to do i'm shattered rip my rip my favorite jacket it's like the only thing i would wear (laughs) and it's just fucked and you know what i'm not even giving up on it yet it's so destroyed I'm not giving up. I'm going to get it repaired. I just need to get a new jacket, man. I'm not going to do that, though. I'm in denial. Please tell me how to fix my jacket. Please help me. Broke my headphones, too, as well. I, I don't know, Everything's just fucking broken. I don't know. When the, when the festival comes on, that's the only thing I can focus on. I focus on the festival, and then everything else in my life just turns to shit. <laughs> headphones are broken. Don't want to spend money to get new ones, because I, you know, I went... Like, three years ago, I'm like, I'm just going to get $300 headphones because I'm a fucking idiot. And then I bought them, and now nothing can compare to the quality of these, and I don't want to replace them because they're just fucked. They still work, though, so I'm walking around with, like, with the headphones, and then on one side, there's just 10 tons of sticky tape that gets my hair caught in it and ruins my life, and I look like an idiot that just won't buy new headphones, which I need to do. Maybe I should go to Dick Smith. Dick Smith is fucking closed down, isn't it? That's a thing. Man, I could have seen that coming as soon as they opened the shop. A shop called Dick Smith. Who the fuck wants to... Who's going to buy anything from a place called Dick Smith? Oi, uh, like a 15-year-old boy, where's he going to go to buy video games? A place called JB Hi-Fi or the place called Cock Smith? No one's going to go to Dick Smith, man. What did they even sell? I can't even... I remember... I remember so many times I've walked into into a Dick Smith and just looked around and gone, yeah, there's a lot of things in here, but nothing that I would ever buy. Whoever was heading up that shit was an idiot. Dick Smith, the the real Dick Smith is a genius. He saw that ship coming from fucking 30, 30 miles away. He sold that as soon as he could. He set up a whole bunch of them, made it look made it look like it was doing well, and then just sold the whole thing off to some poor sap who's probably. His life is probably fucked now. The dude's probably bankrupt. His lo- his wife has left him. The kids hate him. He's just got this dying cancerous Dick, cancerous Dick Smith business that he has to offload off to someone else. Honey, I, I know I know why you're leaving, but did you really have to cheat on me with that guy that owns Kogan? <laughs> I heard that Kogan fucking swooped in and bought Dick Smith and bought everything. Bought, bought all his stock, bought all his shops. Bought his wife and his kids. Mr. Kogan's probably fucking Dick Smith's wife <laughs> in the ass for like a month. <laughs> and that's what they do. Um, all right, guys, uh, let's get on to the worst part of the podcast. But before we do that, if you would like to keep 
this podcast and everything that I do free, please do support me on Patreon. Uh, Patreon is like Kickstarter. You can support me with a little bit of uh, money per month, once a month. The lowest, the lowest one is three bucks a month. Who can't afford three dollars a month? I'll tell you who: African kids in diamond mines. Um, so, if any African kids in diamond mines are listening to the podcast, um, probably should stop listening, man, and start digging more diamonds. You know, I don't want you to get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you want to support uh, the show on Patreon, uh, just uh, look me up. Go on Patreon.com, search Lewis Spears, and you'll find my page. You can see there's a whole bunch of rewards um, for depending on how much you give. Like for example, if you the, the lowest level, I give you free uh, early access to every single one of my videos, and that's a pretty cool thing for you guys. So if you'd like to support me on Patreon and help me keep everything free and make it a little bit better, you can do so. Now, let's get into your questions for the month. I've got two uh, questions uh, for miscellaneous bit of the end. It's by far the worst part of my job, worst part of the week, worst part of my fucking life. Turn it off now because I hate this part of the podcast. <clears throat> All right, let's get on with the fucking... Man, I, I hate to tell you guys, some of you guys can't spell. Some of you guys can't write anything or read. All right. Uh, hey, man, if you end up answering this... I. I don't really mind if I'm a non or not, but it would be cool if you called me Harry. So, you just just say call me Harry. That confused me. Uh, <laughs> I just want to share my experience. Uh, so, around this time last year, I met my best mate. We've been through thick and thin together and we're loyal as could be to each other. Good, man. Good on you, Harry. Um, have you been fucking each other, though? I don't think so. We'll find out. We'll read the rest of him. I hope you guys haven't didn't accidentally fuck. Like you got a little bit too drunk. You're like, let's play gay chicken. <laughs> All right, let's play gay chicken. That'll be fun. Next thing you know, you've got Harry's dick in your mouth, and you're just like, oh, what have I done? Is am I winning right now, or have I just lost everything? <laughs> um, we're as loyal as can be. Um, we've been through thick and thin. All right, lately I've noticed he's been distant at times or just upset. Yeah, you shouldn't have sucked his dick. Uh, or just upset in general, and I know he suffers from anxiety just like myself. But because of that, even though I know what he's experiencing, I just don't know how to approach him about it, and I don't want to be all curious and in your face about it, but just be supportive, but I don't know how to express this. Uh, I don't know, man. You need to, um... It's a bit weird with men and feelings, isn't it? It's like, hey man, I've I've noticed that you've been uh, you've been cutting your wrists every day. Do you want me? Do you want to talk about it? No, man, I'm not fucking gay. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. I think you need just uh, you're his mate. You sound like you guys are really good friends. Just have a talk. Like li- like you need. It's hard with friends with male friends because everyone's all locked up and emotionally vacant. You need to just you, you need a trick. You need to trick each other into talking about emotions. Like invite him over to do something that you normally do, like, hey man, do you want to come over and play fucking video games? And then, uh, I don't know, after you've killed, like, after about an hour of killing people, then you just kind of go, ha, yeah, man, hey, uh, are you alright? Like, don't even, don't even, don't, you need to sound like you don't give a fuck, right? So you need to be like, it's no big deal, right? Because if you're, if you sit him down and go, man, I'm really worried about you, he's not going to tell you shit. He's going to think it's weird. And he's going to think, did this dude put Rohypnol in my drink? Just play video games for an hour. And then out of the blue go, uh, like you, like you don't even give a fuck. Like, Hey man, by the way, you all right? Huh? You're right, man. Just, uh, just, you know, oh, we've got a couple of minutes in between the next game. You're right, man. That's all you need. And then, uh, hopefully he'll tell you. And then just talk to him and be like, uh, yeah, man, sounds pretty bad. If you, uh, you know, if you ever want something, then, uh, just, uh, you know, you know, I'm, uh, I'm your mate and, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. And then, uh, hug it out, say no homo and, uh, you're good. All right, just talk to him, man. Just have a, just, just give him a, hey man, are you okay? You know, that are you okay day shit? Just pretend it's that day. <laughs> uh, what's the rest? All right. <clears throat> I started rapping just over half a year ago as a hobby and something to express what goes on in my head. The type of things I just can't put into a sentence and it's really helped us become closer as mates since I've written a fair bit about him. Uh, Okay, so you're writing songs about him. This is why he thinks you're weird. (laughs) But he just doesn't seem as interested in it as he used to be when I started. Anyway, I was just wondering if you can help me with how to approach him about being upset and be a supportive friend Thanks for your time. If you end up helping me with this, I'll be more grateful. 
I'd be more than grateful. Um, yeah, like I said, just as an offhanded thing, just ask him, hey man, you're right, you're right, bro, and then he'll give you an answer, hopefully. Um, and with with the, he's not into the rap thing, don't worry about that, man. Maybe he just doesn't want to be a rapper. Don't ever let somebody else's attitude affect how often or how hard you work at the thing you want to do. Don't worry about that. If you want to rap, do some rap. Fuck him. If he doesn't want to do it, fuck him. You're going to do it anyway. If he gets back involved, he can do it. You can't ever make him interested in rap. He has to make himself interested in it. Maybe he's not interested in it. Maybe he's having a bit of an emotional depressive moment and you can help him through that. But your rap thing is sep. Your passion for rap and making shit is separate to your relationship with him. Don't let him control... Don't let anybody control the thing that you want to do, is what I'm saying. So yeah, just uh, just have a chat. Say no homo. Hopefully he's all right. Good luck, mate. Next question. Uh, Sup, cunty? Uh, I have a question for Spearhead Sundays. I sincerely hope you're having the shittest one. <laughs> I like that, man. To preface the story, uh, my mother is an abusive, violent alcoholic. Holy shit! Uh, who I have never had a good relationship with, and since my dad died... Oh, fuck! Man, this is getting... This is depressing fucking emails, isn't it? This is just making misbit even worse. Fuck. Jesus Christ, what are you guys doing? Um, I hope you're alright. <laughs> fuck. Uh, her be- uh, since my dad died, her behavioural extremities have only increased. Anyway, when I was 17 last year, she kicked me out of home for no reason other than she couldn't be bothered dealing with me anymore. Uh, Obviously, this angered me, but there was nothing I could do about it. Good on you. Uh, I was homeless for two weeks before I found somewhere to live. She called my friend's parents and forced them to take... Forced them not to take me. Oh. Dude, what a cunt. She called my friend's parents and forced them not to take me. What an asshole. Uh, throughout that year, I completed year 12 and worked full time to afford living by myself. Man, you're a fucking, you're a trooper, dude. You did year 12 and you worked full time. That's amazing. Well done. Uh, the whole year, I only ever spoke to her once, which was when my dad's will was being read out. She never called to, called to ask how I was. Nothing. A couple of weeks ago, I, I, bro, this is, I'm, I'm sad. (laughs) Uh, A couple of weeks ago, I spoke to her and basically said that while alcohol is in her life, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be because I don't need her abuse in my life. Yeah, man. Fuck. Fuck. Yeah. I'm feeling that. Stick it to the man. Stand strong, bro. And she said, I have no right to tell her what to do and hung up and she hasn't spoken to me. My question is, am I wrong for giving this ultimatum? Am I wrong to cut out my mother from my life? It was a completely toxic relationship, so I feel no guilt, but I'd love a third-party opinion. Cheers for reading. Keep me anonymous. Yeah, dude. You're, to- you're totally in the right, man. Like, I think it... You sound like you've got a real solid head on your shoulders, man. Like, uh, you sound like you're just going to do what you need to do, fuck everybody else kind of thing. That's really good, man. You had a job through year 12. You supported yourself. Not even her kicking you out could stop you from doing what you wanted to do. Man, that'd, that'd like, crush a lot of people getting kicked out of home. They wouldn't... A lot of people wouldn't be able to do that, man. Well done. And, look, with the ultimatum thing, yeah, it's fucking hard, but I think a lot of time with, um... With people like that, you you almost have to. Like, I'm, I'm assuming that you've tried really, really hard before this point. Like, she didn't just have a sip of a martini and you were like, Mom, you're a fucking alcoholic! Like, I'm assuming that you didn't do that. Um... So, uh, yeah, man, I think, I think you're correct. I don't, I don't think that you're wrong for giving her an ultimatum. I'm sure that it sucks, but at the end of the day, sounds like she was being, you know, she sounds like she's being an alcoholic and abusive person and you don't want to deal with that shit. Um, yeah, man, like, and, and obviously she, if she hasn't tried to contact you at all after you've given her the ultimatum, then obviously, obviously whatever she is doing is more important than, than you at the moment. It might change. Who knows? I would say, I would say, give her the ultimatum, cut her out, but but um, l- give her an option back in. Do you know what I mean? Like, at, like, give her, allow allow her to let her know that if she does stop this shit, she can re-enter your life. That's what I think. Um, which you have already done. So 
yeah, man. I don't, I think you're fine. But um, and and fucking good on you. That uh, not many people do that. A lot of people let themselves get abused and and used like that, and and they don't do anything about it. So good on good on you for standing up for yourself, man. I'm uh, proud of you. Hope things get better for you as well down the line. Good on you, mate. But yeah, that's uh, that's the end of miscellaneous bit at the end. I got a bit heavy there for a moment, didn't it? Fuck, I feel like Doctor Phil. <laughs> Uh, but thanks for sending your questions in. If you would like a question answered, you can email me at contact at lewspears.com. I'm getting heaps and heaps of questions now at the moment. Uh, I'm thinking of, I might have to change the fucking podcast email because I keep losing them. I get all of my business, everything about my shows, everything about YouTube, and all my contact just goes straight to that email. I need to set up another one. Fuck. Um, oh, I, f- I forgot to say, I sold out another show. How cool is that? I sold out Friday night in Melbourne. The first Friday and Saturday are now both sold out. That's two shows so far. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate that. Opening night is April 5th. <clears throat> Please come to that show. I'd love to sell that one out too. Uh, that one's about half full. Um, but yeah, so the first weekend, the first Friday, Saturday night is completely sold out. There's still tickets to Sunday. And then there's the second Friday and Saturday. If you can only come on a Friday and a Saturday night, you really should book pretty much now. Like they're going that quick. So for the first Friday, the second Friday and Saturday, they're ha- they're more than half gone. So please do book if that's the only night you can come. Because if you're, because you know, I man, I'm I'm so like this. I decide I'm definitely going to see an artist, and then I don't book fucking tickets until the day before. But like this, the Friday and Saturday night, they will 100% sell out a couple of days out from the show. So please do book if that's the only time you can see it. Because if you go, if the guys who can only go to a Friday and a Saturday show book, that means the guys who are flexible, they can come to the other shows. And it works out better for everybody. Because, you you know, I, I, I would hate to, for you guys to miss out. So, yeah, thank you very much for booking. Thank you very much for selling out a Friday and a Saturday show. I'm very fucking happy. Man, that's awesome. That's so cool. I've, uh, I, I've, I've figured, oh, I also figured out, I've, uh, from... From it's hard to say. From last year, I counted out. I counted up all of the tickets that I sold last year in total after the the tour finished. I've already sold more than that this year. So I'm fucking. I'm really happy. I'm very happy. I broke even. I've sold more than than last year. So I'm really really happy. Thank you very much, guys. Really do appreciate. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for selling out Friday and Saturday night. There's only um. There's only. Two more Friday, one, well, one more, one Friday, one Saturday, whatever. There's only two more weekend shows. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much for subscribing uh, on iTunes. And thank you very much for rating on iTunes. But most of all, thank you very much for supporting me on Patreon. And even more, most of all than that, thank you for, for um, listening. Or whatever. I don't know. That's the end of the podcast. Thanks for listening. Have a shit one.